First into the den today is 26-year-old Layla Bennett from Powys, along with her Gur hybrid falcon, Monty. Hello, dragons. I'm Layla, and this is Monty from Hawks Drift Falconry. We'd like to ask you today for £50,000 for a 25% share of our company. Hawks Drift is a profitable, successful and growing company. We specialise in the commercial use of birds of prey. Our main income comes from bird control. That's the natural and environmentally friendly control of pest species of birds by using raptors. Our other services include falconry displays, falconry experience days, corporate entertainment and our own unique service of delivery by birds of prey. Our most popular form of this service is the delivery of wedding rings to the best man on command during the weddings. I established Hawks Drift in 2006. We have made a profit every year. Last year I turned £72,500. I'd love to answer any of your questions, and if anybody would like to step forward and hold Monty, you'd be very welcome to do so. Thank you. The dragons are clearly mesmerised by Monty, but what of the opportunity on offer? And what's that noise he's making? <laughs> That's asking for food. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> he's very cute. He's very cute. In return for a quarter of Layla Bennett's growing falconry company, she wants a £50,000 cash injection. Oh, Monty, you are a beaut. Theo Pafitis is first to quiz the young entrepreneur. So what does Monty do? Monty's primarily used for bird control. That's where our main income comes what, what from. Does, what does bird control mean? Mainly the dispersal of gulls and pigeons, although we can't do any pest species of bird. So we're working on things like landfill sites. Does he eat them or just scares them? No, he just scares them. So it's friendly, it's good for PR. Um, we very rarely kill anything. It's instead of trapping or shooting or something like that where obviously mass culling is involved. You finished with me? Yes? He said he's had enough. Thank you. There you go. Come on. An unusual calmness has taken over the den. It's Deborah Meaden who brings it back to business. How many birds have you got to start off with? Over 30. Um, and what, what type of birds are, are the falcons most effective against? Gulls and pigeons. Pigeons have been a nightmare this year. Mm. Yeah, oh, I've, oh, I'm oh. sorry, I've experienced pigeon yeah, well. pests. <laughs> but let's focus on the business. So you talked about turning over 72,500? Yes, last year. How much year. of that became profit? Um, 49,700 was gross profit. Net profit was 22,700. And is that after your t are you taking a salary out of that? There's myself and my partner full time. We have about 12,000 pounds and we live basically off that. So there's two of you living off 12 and a half thousand. That's very committed. Well, we're extremely happy we get to live in a beautiful field and deal with these fantastic creatures every day. It's, that's worth living on 12,000 for. What will the business look like next year? Next year we expect to turn £125,000. Bearing in mind that in 2009 we only turned 38000 in 2010 we turned 72500 So the business is expanding very rapidly. Why? Why? We, we are gaining um, pest control contracts for bird control rapidly. Um, we have a particularly interesting one that has just come up um, about a month, month and a half ago. So that isn't included in last year's profit. That's why I expect to turn so much more in 2011. Impressive claims. Now, James Kahn drills down into the company's financials. Leila, what's the value of the stock that you hold? We're valuing our business at the moment purely on assets at around £100,000. I currently own an eight and a half acre small holding in Mid Wales, which I bought when I was 21 just as a field. Three and a half, four years ago, I achieved planning permission for a static caravan there. That brought the value up at £75,000. What are you going to do with the £50,000? £21,000 of that was going to be used to build the aviaries and put the breeding pairs in them. 
we'd like to use 8,500 to make my part-time person a full-time person because I work every single day um, and I don't put myself aside enough hours to do the marketing, um, do the accounts and try and push my business further forward. The other 20,000 of that would be used for advertising and marketing. It sounds like you've got it pretty well sussed. I think you, you know what you're doing, you've got a business. Well, that's lovely. I don't feel like that. I'd greatly value some advice, especially on the marketing side. In what, what way? Um, the bird control is going fantastically well. We, the contract that we've just gained is the leading British company for pest control. They've asked to use us solely throughout all of South Wales and Gloucestershire, but certainly our unique services, for example, the delivery, um, also the Falconry Experience Days and the Falconry Displays and corporate entertainment. They certainly need some marketing. The sure-footed Layla is handling the cross-examination very skillfully, and Peter Jones has made up his mind. Layla, um, I, I think this is fantastic. I can see this business scaling for you and I can see you're making it work at the moment very successfully. As an outside investor, to become really big and get a decent return, I think you need to do something a little bit bigger. So I won't be investing and I'm out. Thank you very much for your time. Leila, I'm, I'm, I'll let you know where I am. Um, I'm, I'm smitten. I think the bird's lovely. You present very, very well. But you haven't made a compelling business case for the return on my investment. Okay. So it's a shame because we, I, I, you might have seen the little battle going on between my heart and my head. Unfortunately, as happens usually, my head wins. So I'm afraid I'm out. Thank you, Deborah. A major setback for Layla. But three dragons still remain. Can Duncan Bannatyne find a reason to invest? Leila, how old were you when you bought this plot of land? 21. And where did you get the money? Um, I worked doing absolutely anything I possibly could and I had £5,000 of my own money. The rest was a bank loan, which I currently still owe money on, but is always repayments are kept up. And did you buy the land in your name or in the company yes, name? in my name. So are you offering, at the moment, 25% of the company without the land or with the land? At 25% with the land. So you're going to put the land into the company? I think that's a good idea. You're a dragon, I trust you. It's now Layla and not Monty who is enchanting the remaining dragons, but she's yet to receive an offer. Will Theo Pafitis give her the investment she badly needs? At the end of the day, you're asking for a business investment. Do I think £50,000 for 25% of a falconry business is a good use of my money, my time, my efforts and my involvement. Well, because I started with absolutely nothing in 2006. I left home at 16, took up falconry, worked anything I possibly could, lambing, farming, cleaning holiday cottages, bar work. But with your investment and your help, this business will be changed. It will grow even quicker than it already is growing and it will show you a profit. Leila, how old are you? I'm 26 and a half. 26 and a half. Look, it sounds to me that you've begged, scrimped, worked, scraped and just made it happen out of nothing. So I'm struggling to make an investment proposal to you. And on the other hand, something tells me it'd be great to be part of it. I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to give you half the money. But I'm going to keep my business hat on. I would need, for the risk-reward ratio in this, 20%. Finally, Layla receives an offer. But strict den rules state she must secure the full £50,000 or she walks away with nothing. Just two dragons remain. You're asking for £50,000 for 25% of the company, which will include the land and anything built on the land. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to offer you exactly what you've asked for. £50,000 for 25% of the company. Because I don't think MDA should try and drive a hard bargain with you. Because I think, you know, what you're offering is very good value. Thank you, Duncan. I don't think it was a case of driving a hard bargain, Duncan. I think I made absolutely clear what my view was. Dragon rivalry comes to the fore, but the result is that Layla does have a full offer. Will James Kahn now choose to compete? It's a tough one, Layla. Um, may I ask you, you'll excuse me, but I've been working every day up until now, so I haven't really had time to sit at my computer, and I haven't Googled you all. May I ask a little bit about yourselves and your companies? It's a stupid question, I'm aware of that. Well, it's the first stupid question you've asked. It's not stupid because it hasn't got a relevance. It's stupid because you've come here and you haven't done your homework. She did explain that, though, Theo, before she asked the question. I don't care. OK, thank you for your answer. Um, Leila, I think you've got the offer you were looking for. You don't need an investment from me, so I'm going to say I'm out. Thank you very much. Are you going to accept my offer? Of course I am, Duncan. Layla and Monty have done it and leave the den with the money and the dragon they needed. <laughs>